ARQ stands for automatic repeat request and basically this idea is that you transmit if it is received packet is received in error and so what you do is in IP and actually in TCP as well that you send the data if the data does not make it then you send a NAC and if you get a NAC then you send the data again and you get the ACK, then you're all set. I mean, NAC is optional. If you don't send the NAC, the sender will time out and will send it. That will take even longer. So NAC saves you some time. All right, so what is wrong with this? The wrong, what, what is wrong with this is that now the whole data has to be sent again and the previous data is discarded. So somebody figured out that if we keep the previous bad bits, and get the new bad bits, combine them, we might be able to get good bits. So that's what we do. We send the data with half puncture, and this guy could not make anything good out of that. So it says, sorry, I didn't get it. Then it says, okay, all right, here are half of the bits that I took away. Half puncture means I took out two bits, and now I'm going to send you one of those two bits. Because so he is not sending the whole data, he's just sending some of the part of the things that it had kept. Now you might be able to combine and decode. Now with three-fourth, you are able to do it. Not twice as many bits, but just, you know, like, you know, I mean, actually, I, I think the, we have to do some calculation here. But only three-fourths of the punctured bit, actually, you, you are able to do it. I mean, you know, some kind, something like that, but less bits than before. You see what I mean? Now, if it doesn't make it a second time, what will it do? It will send the, the other one fourth bit that it has kept. Right now, you got the whole bit set. Figure it out now what is there, right? If you don't make it, then maybe I will send you the whole thing all over again, right? But most of the time, with one retransmission, you might be able to do it. Now, no, notice here that puncturing is not a MAC function. It's the phi which keeps it, right? So the phi has to know that we are retransmitting that we have to, we have the punctured bits, let's send those punctured bits. This is why it's called hybrid, because the Mac alone cannot do this, and the Phi alone cannot do this. It's the hybrid. It's both combined. Now, there are two ways you can do it. This is one way. Second way is that you just send the bit data again. Now, second time, some other bits are bad. This time, these bits are bad. And sometimes, you know which bits are bad, because this bit is really not clear whether it's 0 or 1. Everything else I know because this bit is like halfway between 0 and 1, right? And here on this side, this bit I know is 1, but this bit I'm not so 0 or 1. You can combine those two and take the good bits. One alternative is to combine the good bits of multiple transmission. This is called chase combining, a type 1 HARQ. This is called incremental redundancy, a type 2 of HARQ. So even if you send the same bits all over again, HARQ goes back into the phi. Thing is, because here the thing, the Mac doesn't know which bits are good or bad. Basically, what happens is that phi knows. Phi knows that when it is trans translating this analog to digital, it knows that this one didn't come out, you know. All right? And what normally it happens in most of the other networks that we know of is that if some bit is bad, the whole packet is thrown away and the Mac is told, the packet is gone, you know, or, um, you know, something like that, right? And they just retransmit the whole thing and they redo the whole thing and the previous packet is thrown away, right? So now the phi is keeping the previous packet and the new packet comes in, it compares the bits and says, okay, now I can take only good bits out of these, right? So that is why it's called hybrid ARQ. Is, um, Type 2 would be better, more efficient. Yeah, 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 yeah. And type 1 is less efficient. But um, both are allowed. And I, I really don't know. But what happens is that when you write the standard, some people say this one and that one say, okay, like both are allowed. And so I don't know which one is really implemented or not, right? But both are allowed. This is layering has advantages, layering has disadvantages. So the advantage of layering is that when you're designing Mac, you don't have to worry about phi. You can design your Mac as it is, and you can design your Phi without talking to the Mac guys. Now, having said that, that's the advantage, the design time. 
but if the two teams can get together and work out something, so this will work for this particular Mac and this particular Phi. And so now, yes, the disadvantage is that now if somebody brought their own Mac, it will not work on this Phi. If somebody brought their own Phi, you know, so on and so forth. So, so there is this thing, but the, the, then the argument is that when do you bring another Mac on the same Phi? When you make another Mac, you make another Phi. <laughs> so while the layers are all designed independently, at the end of the day, they are just tied to each other, right? So there is an argument on each side. And so this is an optimization. And what is happening is that many of the things that we learned in the wired networks are being broken in the wireless networks just for every single bit. You see, here every single bit is important because there is only so much spectrum and we want to send as many bits as possible through that spectrum. So what happened is, this is this is not after the fact, what happened is before LTE was designed, some lot of people in the academics published these papers then it is better to do this way. And then LTE guys said, okay, like, in this LTE we will do this. So for example, this may not have been done in GSM. I mean, GSM actually isn't a great transmission anyway and they were not designed for data anyway. But I'm just saying that the so previous technologies may not have it. Now, if the technology comes today, so VIMAX does it, LTE does it, LTE advanced and everything else will do it now because people found out that there is a significant advantage. So it all starts with some research and this and that. And so it's not after the fact. I mean, I mean, it is after, I mean, it is not really after the fact because this was in the original VIMAX and I remember going through this whole hard discussion. So if you go to our website, you will find some papers on performance analysis, this and that of ARQ versus hybrid ARQ. Okay, ARQ would be simply, you know, not doing any combined. That was the previous thing that most of the previous technologies before VIMAX did this. Yeah. With the retransmission of the bad bits, in the, in the does that require a whole other brain? Like you have to have, like have packet, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. So basically what will happen is these bits will be sent to the same user and it will indicate that this is, you know, retransmission of HARQ of that previous frame that was there, right? It's just a smaller payload, then it would be there. Yeah, right, right. Now, Second thing LTE tried to do was that they said, well, let's get rid of all these boxes, as many boxes we have and simplify it. So in 2G, we, we saw this one, we had SGSN and GGSN. Remember for data, SGSN and DDSN. In 3G, we still have them. And then this was called RNC. In LTE, now we still need actually some more um, boxes. In particular, we have these three boxes, four boxes here, one, two, three, four box, but everything goes on IP. So that's the thing, is that even voice goes on IP. And that actually causes some problem, and I think that probably was changed later on. I don't know that, but I mean, I will have to check that out. But basically, initially, it was all data, data stuff, right? So everything goes to IP, but goes through these four gate, four functions. So what are those four functions? Serving gateway. So SGW, this is serving gateway. And this one between the radio access network and serves as a mobility anchor when the terminals move. Now, this is something that needs explanation. What is a mobility anchor? And one important thing that I have skipped in this class, and I should not have skipped, but there's not enough time, is mobile IP. The reason I skipped it because nobody uses mobile IP, but the concepts are important. In mobile IP, what happens is that when you go away from your desk, your packets which come to your desk are received by your assistant, and the assistant then sends you the packet to your hotel where you are. It's like a phone call. Your phone number doesn't change when you move, the phone call comes to your office and she says, okay, I will connect you to Mr. X and she forwards the call or he forwards the call to your hotel. 
So that person is a mobility anchor. Okay, mobility anchor doesn't move. You move, but the mobility anchor stays there, and you know where you are. And every time you move, you tell the mobility anchor, "Look, I have moved from Hotel Marriott to Hotel Hilton, you know, or whatever." And now your phone call will go to the new hotel, right? So the mobility anchor is the point which stays fixed and allows you to move. This is mobile IP. Actually, this is basically everywhere else too. I mean, like you know, we have this HLR, Home Location Register, which knows, you know. Okay, so anyway, so that is serving gateway. That is serving gateway's function. Your phone calls, your data part comes to there, but you are now going from tower to tower to tower, from location to location, and it, it goes there. Packet data gateway is basically um, is um, just looks and this is the end of your IP world. Packet data gateway. This is the end of your IP. So everything else that we need to do before we send you on to the wireless is done here. And so it termination of the evolved packet core towards the internet, IP services, address allocation, deep packet inspection, policy enforcement. What is deep packet inspection? Deep packet inspection is security firewall. So all the security stuff that needs to be done before we in, take you in on this side, I put you out on the IP side. That is done here. This is the this is the boundary point. Mobility management entity. Mobility management entity does everything that the anchor doesn't do. So basically, it keeps track of roaming, handovers, tracking, anything that needs to be done for people. You know, so for example, anchor will not tell you which tower to connect, but MME will tell you that okay, you are on this tower, but you are moving north, so now you connect to that tower. Right for network initiated handover, and we we told that there are two kinds of handovers: the mobile initiated handover, in which case the mobile measures two towers and says, "Look, I am getting bigger signal from this tower, so I am going to move to that one," and then the MME will move you to that one. In the other case, is that the MME somehow you know knows that where you are moving to, and tells you that there is a tower there, please connect to that one. So MME job is to just do this handover thing. And policy and charging function, which is very important in the phone business. That is it. so okay, let me see. This one you are saying is it SGW or or what? SGW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so I didn't put it here. Um same thing, yeah. You can put SGW and um Sometimes I've seen S dash GW, sometimes P dash GW. So, but that is the same. So now they have added four movie boxes. I don't know whether really it, it adds, I mean, you know, it helps. Uh, so this is flat. This is the best they can do in terms of, you know, making it IP as well as um, the old thing. It turns out that making LTE IP based doesn't really reduce anything because everything old is still there. You cannot get rid of 2G. Okay. This picture you have seen before. So every LTE system has 2G, 3G, and 4 I mean, an LTE, right? So the previous boxes have not gone away. SG, SN, GG, SN, SS7, SGW. This is what you are talking about. SGW is that what you are saying? Yeah. So those those boxes are all there. SGW is here too. S dash GW, SGW. Okay. Anyway, so so now it is becoming even more complicated. And we have seen this slide too. So I am going to skip that. Um,